Nah. Sounds like it's following me. So we had all heard a lot about the West Virginia Penitentiary. We had viewers emailing us, DMs on Facebook, Instagram, and a lot of people really wanted us to check this place out. Upon arrival, we were given a brief tour, and before we were locked in, we were informed that hundreds of inmates have died of unnatural causes within these walls. So it's said that there's a high level of spiritual activity going on here. Tons of paranormal teams have investigated this location. They've all got some level of activity, so we're all very stoked to be spending the night here. So we brought all of our equipment on this one. We were prepared to spend the night locked in, alone, and see what was going on at this penitentiary. One of the spots that we all found extremely intriguing was the prison church. Take it how you want it, but religion and the afterlife go hand in hand, so we decided to go to the altar in the chapel and run a few tests. Wall ball. Hit a ball area. This is wild. We need to ask them if they open the floor. Did we notice earlier? Yeah, it was closer. Oh, this is where it's at here. This is where a lot of prisoners came to confess their sins and basically wait to be executed. So you can imagine there's a lot of inner dialogue there. They're talking to themselves all the time and maybe they're talking to whatever's waiting for them in the afterlife. Are we gonna do the, uh, the board here? Yeah. In my personal opinion, the Ouija board is one of those things that can either upset the energies that are present or possibly even wake up any entities that might be there. Some people even believe that it's some sort of portal to the other side, so we decided to set up the Ouija board as our first test. And me, I'm not super thrilled about it, obviously, but if I was gonna do it, we were gonna do it on the chapel altar. Ready? All right. One. Three. Can you tell us your name? Can you give us a number? If there's any of you here, can you tell us how many? Whoever's here with us, can you answer yes or no? Did you take anybody's life while you were alive? Just because a place is haunted doesn't mean that we're guaranteed to get activity. So at the end of the day, 
we're willing to do whatever we have to do to try to shake up any kind of spirits or energies that might be present in the building. That's what we're there to do. That's our jobs. Can you move this circle to the beginning initial of your name? There wasn't any like definitive movement, but there was this odd shaking, like someone was trying to communicate, but couldn't. Was that you? I barely have any pressure on it. Did you get some... It feels like, like it's like like shaking. It's like, a... like a slight back and forth type thing. I don't know how to explain it, but it almost felt like it was shaking at certain times. And I know I'm uncomfortable with using the Ouija board, but I can definitely tell the difference between my own hand shaking and the planchette vibrating. If there's something around us, can you come over here and move this planchette for us? We see it trying. Spin it again three times. Go for it. Let's go. One, two, three. Can you just give us a message of any kind? Do you want us here? Session. I'm not getting any type of, I mean, it, there's like a little bit of movement. It feels like a little bit of a pulse through it, but nothing deliberate or, or concrete. So we can wrap it up and we can um, go to goodbye. We'll just try to go to the basement or something. Yeah. All right, go to goodbye. The prison was absolutely massive. We knew that we had a lot of ground that we needed to cover within a limited amount of time. So we figured it would be a good idea to do a lot of split solo sessions at this location. We decided to go to completely separate buildings of the prison. So while we were capturing audio, we weren't interfering with each other's recordings. any spirits of inmates here with me right now. These are all the main cell blocks on the north side. Can you make a noise? Give me some form of communication. Hello. We were informed during the walkthrough that phantom noises in the prison were very, very common. Going to the top floor. Oh, that's fucking freaky looking. Goes all the way both ways. I think I got one more. Solo session in J Block. Hearing a lot of noises coming from around here, guys. Which one of y'all? is making it in these cells. I heard that some of you like to open and close these. Oh, fuck me, dude.
Hello? There's been reports of footsteps being heard when there's nobody there. Uh, jail cell doors slamming, metal bars clanking, just lots and lots of sounds that can't be explained. One B two rocks. There's all sorts of noises. This place has been making noises all night long. It's crazy. Give me a sign that you're here. Ease arms. arms sharp. Stand. Daddy. Daddy. Oh fuck. Fucking need to be careful. Far ass drop. Hello. Some of the sounds just couldn't be explained by old building noise, like loud metal slams, footsteps, things that are pretty definitive things that are pretty certain. Your fucking footsteps. Foot aggression. Foot aggression. What? There's literally fucking noise all over. Hello? The fuck was that? If you're with me, can you make a noise? Is that you banging the bars?
Who's down there? Who's here with me? What the fuck? This place is a fucking trip. At one point, I heard what sounded like footsteps running directly towards me. And being alone in a prison with no one around you, that's horrifying. As I moved further away from where I heard the footsteps, it almost sounded like someone was chasing me. Oh fuck, dude. Sounds like it's following me. And then, I hear all hell break loose down the hallway. Yeah, fuck that. Later. Casey! And at that point, I was out. Oh fuck, dude. Sounds like it's following me. Yeah, fuck that. Later. Tanner! When we met back up at our rendezvous point, it seemed that something was following us because our EMF detector that was giving us very little blips throughout just started going nuts. Okay, there's no, huh? There's nothing here. EMF detector is actually a really cool device. It can detect energy and you could even test this out if you have one or if you've ever seen one. If you hold it up to like a light switch or a power outlet or something of that nature, it'll start blinking and flashing and it'll let you know that there is power there. So it's actually a useful tool outside of paranormal investigations. But when that thing starts blinking on its own, when you're in the middle of a hallway and there's no power around you anywhere, that's kind of hard to explain. So anytime that we get those spikes and it starts blinking, we know that something is around us that is triggering this device to let us know that there's some sort of energy present. You've been lighting it up the whole time. Can you step closer to that device? Can you please make that thing blink again? Message. The EMF detector was alone on a concrete floor, nothing around it, no electrical through the floor, nowhere near a wall, and the thing was going off on demand. Here. Here. What would you like to say? I have never seen something so deliberate. I put the EMF detector on the floor in the middle of the hallway, there's no power anywhere near it, and I asked whatever spirit or entity was present with us if it could come closer and light up the device, and it did. You've been lighting it up the whole time. Can you step closer to that device? 
Can you please make that thing blink again? You just don't see things go off on demand like that very often. So when you do, it's really exciting because it feels like an extremely direct form of communication. Stop. Maybe you're scared now. All right, want to, uh, you didn't hear the noise come from right here? Like a voice? No. You heard a voice? Yeah. I knew I heard something, but I just couldn't make it out. It sounded like a male voice talking from far down one of the halls. To hear them in person while recording is extremely rare, and Colton actually heard one of those this time. Maybe you're scared now. You didn't hear the noise come from right here? Again, we are the only ones that are in the location. So technically, that kind of thing shouldn't be happening. Hello? At one point, we were heading towards the infirmary, and as we approached the building, we heard an extremely loud slam from within the building. We were definitely caught off guard by this noise, and as soon as we started to approach where it came from, a door slammed behind us. What was that? It sounded like it came from inside. The whole fucking tour we got back, and we did not move. It just closed. Yeah, it just shut. This door was open during the entire investigation up until this point, and even during our walkthrough with the guide. So I just find it kind of odd that it magically slammed shut on its own as soon as we're done with that wing of the prison. It sounded like it came from inside. The whole fucking tour we got back, and we did not move. It just closed. Yeah, it just shut. Did you just slam something up here? What was that noise we just heard? As we were walking through the infirmary, Tanner notices a strange room, and inside the room is like a restraint table. Look. It's like they would like put their head in this. Oh my god. Inside of here, and then they'd strap you down with these. And then what did you build? I don't know what. This has to have some sort of purpose. It seems like the table was being used to strap like uncooperative inmates down but there was like this box that went over their heads that could be lowered by a hinge. Oh, this is on a hinge. Oh. One of us should fucking lay on this. I thought it was a good idea to strap one of us down to the bed and 
try to communicate, get some EVPs. I truly believe that whenever you're in a compromised position, when you can't control your own body and you're alone, those channels of communication open right up. It's almost like the entities see the vulnerability and it makes them more willing to communicate with us. Provoking entities is something that we've all done in the past on the episodes. If we're not getting the types of activity that we're hoping to get, we will do things that are targeted towards whatever entities we're visiting. I've done it in the past at prisons, hospitals. I've put on a prison uniform. I've been handcuffed to a chair. Um, and at this location, I figured I'd be the one to go ahead and volunteer. So I was gonna be strapped down to that table and that box was gonna be put over my head. However, I didn't realize at the time how alone that would actually feel until the guys left. Yeah, this feels great. So, for those of you who don't know, we just left Casey. We trapped his head in that like forced pill eating thing and I honestly feel kind of bad about li like leaving him there. Well, you think about it this way too. If something does happen, he can't get his hands free. Honestly, leaving Casey alone there, completely unable to move, I felt bad. I went to the other side of the infirmary and even if he yelled or anything, I couldn't hear him. So he really was completely alone at that time and I fell for him. favorite part. Good form. Good form. I had a feeling about this place. About this x-ray room. I heard something slam upstairs earlier. Sounded like a brick fell or something. Was that you? Can you do it again? Hello, hello. Once the guys left, after about five minutes, I started feeling really claustrophobic. I mean, I was hearing noises around me, above me, from down the hallway. We were told that your assistant was a killer convicted killer. Are you here with me now? Is anyone that lost their life in this section of the building with me now? It was just a feeling of helplessness. I couldn't move. I couldn't see to the left or right of me. I was just trapped in that one spot. Hey guys. Being heard. Do you hear me? West. Around. Around. I can't see us out of this box. If like Tanner and Colton are standing right next to me right now, I wouldn't even know it. I ended up following a noise I heard which led me out of the infirmary. And once I found the cafeteria, I set up a yes-no prism and started asking questions.
hear something right above me. The yes or no prism is a directional EMF detector. So if an energy can show up on either side of it, it can light up green for yes or red for no. On my side of the building, I was hearing all kinds of noises, unexplainable noises like slams, ticks, knocks, and Colin was somewhere downstairs, he couldn't be making them, and Casey was strapped to a bed, so he couldn't either. There's a lot of noise coming through. Is that you? Light it up green for yes. What the fuck was that? Oh, that's something big. What's that in here? At one point, I felt like I was being watched, and I could swear a couple times I felt something brushing against my hand. Something keeps fucking touching my hand. I'm gonna review this recording right here, so if there's anything you'd like to say, please say it now. After about 20 minutes of Casey doing the tests on his own, strapped down, doing EVPs, I went back and he said he felt fine, except for he felt something kind of touch his hand, which is obviously very weird to hear. Yo. Yo. Dude. Something's been touching my hand the whole fucking time I was in here. Weird. Oh, how long was I in here? Uh, 20 minutes. I kept hearing noises above me. Footsteps. Loud footsteps. Completely audible. To the point where I stopped what I was doing just to listen to them. Lots of artwork over the walls. Oh. 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 The strange thing about it is, I wasn't even in the same building as the other guys. So it couldn't have been Tanner's footsteps walking above me. I don't know where Colton is. At a certain point, I felt really uncomfortable being without the team, and the noises kept getting louder and closer, so I decided to call it and just meet back up with the guys. So above us is the wardens, and that's where we keep hearing all that thumping, which is the one place we can't go to. Huh. Once Colton got back, we headed down to an area of the basement that we were told one of the janitors of the prison was murdered in. People have claimed to feel the janitor's breath on their neck when they're down in the basement, and they said that they felt cold drops of air in that area. Um, we thought it would be a good idea to set up the thermal detector so that if there was any change in the heat or the temperature or anything, we'd be able to see it on that device while we were running the spirit box. So this is the room where that tube worked. It was assigned to run in this machine. She said he was a snitch. So an inmate stuck down here and Massacred, like just slayed him. Yeah. And they found his corpse over here. His, corpse his body was found and just massacred in here. I think this corner is just a Oh, you smell that in here too? Yeah. I just sniffed it. 
It smells like poison or something. It's fucking cold down here. Um, I think that this is the perfect spot. This is where they found his body. Wait, it's wet down there. You're gonna get mud all over your shit if you step down there. No, it's concrete. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is where they found his body. We decided to go completely lights out in the basement. A lot of the time, entities are a lot more comfortable communicating with us when we're in complete darkness. And we had our thermal cameras on, so we figured we'd give it a try. During this test, when Tanner said that he felt something touch his shoulder, we watched back the video footage while we were down there in the basement, and at the time, we really didn't notice anything on the thermal image that we were watching. But once we blew it up on the computer, what we were able to see is mind-blowing. When we were down in the basement, I felt like someone or something touched my left shoulder, like almost placed a hand on my left shoulder. And at first I thought maybe it was one of the guys. I could hear them talking. They were still on my right. What I felt was on the left. physically see someone or something on the thermal camera reaching out and touch me and it looked like it was in the form of a human. When I saw the figure from the thermal after the investigation, I had a number of things go through my mind. Number one, excitement because we caught something completely out of the normal. Number two, disbelief because we were all in chairs sitting around and nobody moved to be able to make a thermal image show up on the thing. And number three, this is horrifying. We're literally down here trying to communicate in a circle and something is down here in the dark with us. Is there anybody else down here besides the I just person? Felt pressure on my shoulder. Didn't really feel cold, didn't feel warm. It was just there. Like a hand put on my shoulder. Just barely, but like I for sure felt something just like someone set their hand on my fucking shoulder like this. Hey, hey. was that you? Hey. Uh, I'm gonna lights out again. You did? Yeah. Did it feel aggressive? No, it just it was very. I want to say soft, but like a gentle, just yeah. almost like someone just set their hand. We stayed the entire night. We continued running tests all the way from EMF to spirit box to even the yes-no prism. What I felt and saw on the thermal camera in the basement is definitive to me. No one was there. It was someone or something, don't really know, placed their hand on my left shoulder. You can't explain that. I can for sure tell you this place is haunted. Um, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I had to stop what I was doing. And we're pretty focused when we get in there. We have a limited amount of time to do our investigation most of the time, and I'm not sitting there trying to like, you know, bullshit and just stop for every little thing that I can debunk myself, but these things that were going on there were absolutely out of the normal, even for someone that does what we do. It's extremely obvious to me that this is a very active, very haunted place. Other people have experienced stuff there, but we experienced some, what I consider to be extreme activity. We got very clear signs. 
EMF detector going off on demand just doesn't happen. It's, if I had a, a scale it from one to 10, I'd give it, based on the places I've been, I'd give us a, a solid running for like a, like second, like a 9.5. There are tons of paranormal teams that have investigated there. Mostly all the teams that go there get some sort of evidence. They get footsteps, they hear voices, similar to the stuff that we saw when we were there. It's just too coincidental to not be something. I mean, the EMF detector going off on its own, hearing voices down the hallway uh, when nobody else was around, the doors like rattling and slamming when Colton did his solo session, um, just too many things for it to be coincidences, and I would definitely say that that is one of the more haunted locations that we've been to as a team.